Hello, hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday. I'm pretty sure it's Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, y'all. What is going on? Man, oh man. Oh man. How are you doing? I hope you're having a good week so far. I hope you're having a good Wednesday, hump day, midweek. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, what are we doing today? What are we talking about today? Today, I've got some new holo taco I want to show you. So if you're in the nail community, if you're here hanging out within the nail space, um, you probably saw that Christine, aka holo taco, came out with a birthstone collection a couple weeks ago. Mine showed up and I'm very excited. I only bought one of the colors. I didn't want to go ahead and spend all the money to get all the colors. I should have gotten at least two of them, I will say, but I did only get the one, but that's okay. Um, alongside the one, I also cashed in some of my points so I could get a, another color. So that's this little purple one here. And then I went on and bought another scattered holo taco. So I figure, why don't we just do a quick little stream on this Wednesday afternoon? A little Manny Wednesday action. I know. I was planning on doing this on Monday and... It said that my package was going to be delivered on Monday and it showed up at like eight something at night. So I was like, a mm, little too late for me to be streaming personally. The way that my brain and circadian rhythm is set up. Not a good idea. So we're just going to have to push it a little bit. But uh, life has been lifing once again. <laughs> so here we are on a Wednesday, but that's all right. We're doing our nails. So yeah, I figured we'd do a short little stream, hang out for a bit, um, paint my nails with... I'm gonna use one of these. I'm gonna show all of these. Do, do hi, how are you? Happy Wednesday. Um, I will show all three of these colors. I'm not gonna use all three. I'm almost 100% sure I'm just gonna use my birthstone one. That's why we're here. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're doing. Playing some holo taco on this Manny Wednesday. <laughs> so uh, currently on my nails, as I get ready to take this off, I will show you. Um, I. I'm really proud that my nails have been growing out a little bit with these weekly manicures that I've been doing. Um, haven't streamed in a couple of weeks, but I have been trying to keep up with my nails. And um, this is where we're at. My right hand doesn't count because I'm right-handed and they break very quickly, but my left hand looks pretty good, doesn't it? What I ended up doing is putting an actual builder gel down on the bottom of my nails because, on the bottom, like as a base coat, just because my nails get kind of thin and peely, if you know, you know. So yeah, we went with a little bit of Builder Gel and then I just needed like a basic something. Just, I needed some color over the Builder Gel. It's a pretty like pinky shade on its own, but not enough for me. So this is actually Hollow Taco's Spirit Fingers from Sophia Nygaard's collection last year that came out, I think. Um, and it's actually like really pretty. It's like a gray lavender with like a pink shift it's hard to explain but it's very pretty just one coat of this so it's semi sheer um the builder gel i have is also kind of semi sheer so all layered it's not completely opaque but it's kind of a cool look you know i'm, I'm really liking it they're looking gorgeous thank you thank you yeah i was actually really proud of this and kind of like at the time i was just like i just need to put something on my nails i'm not really being particular as to what it is what is right near me. Okay, great, let's see how this looks. And it looks pretty good. No stamping this time, but still, I'm definitely gonna have to come back to this and maybe use this as a base and stamp on top of it. That's gonna be really cute. But yeah, what we're gonna do is, I left my acetone downstairs, but I do have some nail polish remover here. Might take a little bit longer, hopefully not, but take some of the color off and uh, play with the new ones. So I'll show you those new ones while we're talking about them. From Holo Taco, Jadoob, did you end up did you end up picking up anything from this drop? I got myself a new scattered Holo Taco. This is one of my favorite top coats, uh, just to put on top of basically anything. Painting polish. Hello, hello. How are you? Happy Wednesday. Uh, scattered Holo Taco is one of my favorites out of the three like original top coats she came out with. It was this, the linear, and the flaky. I think they're all really pretty. I just like this one the best. And mine was like super old and thick and crusty. So I got a new one of these, very pretty. And then I picked up with some of the points that I had. Hollow Taco has a little rewards program. The more you spend, you get the points, you cash them in for stuff. So I cashed them in for this pretty purple shade. 
in the color Electric Sweetener. This is from the like Rock Candy collection, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I had skipped that full collection. I was like, it's cute, but like whatever. But to get it for free with my points, I was like, all right, yeah, let's try it. No, you skipped it, yeah, no, that's fair. I will say, I heard and saw through the grapevine that this most recent collection, which is what we're gonna be painting with today. Look at the box. It's so pretty. Um, little gemstones everywhere. So this was her birthstone collection. Came out for Christine's birthday. They did 12 different colors. So there wasn't a big collection box. A lot of times when they do drops, she'll have like one really cool collector's box. Um, not this time, because that's 12 different colors. But I did pick up my birthstone. This is June. So it's the price is Alexandrite. Fun name. Um, I had an alarm set. I figured I was going to get June because I saw that it was going to be Alexandrite. Well, before I saw it, I was like, oh, if it's Pearl, we'll see. If it's Alexandrite, I'm going to get it. And then I saw it and I was like, oh, I'm 100% getting this. I may buy two. <laughs> um, and had an alarm set on my phone for when this polish dropped because I did not want to miss it. I had a feeling it was going to sell out. And sure enough, that whole collection sold out apparently within like a few hours. This was the first. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if it wasn't, if June wasn't the very first one to sell out, I think it was one of the first two or three colors to sell out. So glad I had that alarm set. I was able to buy it like five minutes after it dropped and get this one. Um, I will say I didn't take the time to look at all of the colors. I just knew I wanted June kind of quickly skimmed the rest and was like, nope, just June. Okay, let's go before it sells out. And if I had paid attention, I would have bought December's also because that was a really, really pretty one. But I got June. That's all that matters. Uh, yeah, Alexandrite is a birthstone gemstone that it's very rare when it comes to naturally occurring. A lot of what you'll see is like synthetically made, which I'm totally fine with. Don't mine up the earth for a ring. <laughs> you know what I mean? But in different lighting, it kind of shifts colors. So it's really pretty. But yeah, we're going to paint my nails with this color today. Um, I kind of want to swatch this one just because I don't really know what to expect, what it looks like, um, besides looking at it in the bottle. But yeah, this is this is why I'm here, if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> so let me clear space for myself, grab a little bit of this remover, and uh, we'll get going. You can actually see me from when I did my nails swatching to see what this is going to look like. This is Spirit Fingers, and then I mixed up a like sheer pink, like a very, very sheer... Uh, what would you even call it? Just like a sheer like baby pink shade to kind of go as like a very your nails but better. Um, and that's what I got here. Little Giggles, hello. Yes, we're messing with Hollow Taco today. How are you? Happy Wednesday. Did you pick up anything from the Hollow Taco drop? Please, I'm very curious if you made it in before everything sold out. Uh, yeah, doing swatches on a napkin because of course, of course you do. That's what everyone does, right? Okay, so um, I hope this doesn't take too long to take off. I left my like pure acetone downstairs. This is just like half non-acetone remover that I then added acetone to because <laughs> I was like, you're taking way too long. Um, yeah, it's not that bad. I don't have a bunch of layers on, so it's not that bad. Good and you, I'm doing okay. I'm doing a little bit better. This last few weeks have been extremely stressful, which is why I haven't streamed since the end of September, sadly. You haven't done gel? Oh, you have it because you do gel. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm getting into, um, because my nails are kind of thin and peely, I've been doing layers of base gel or like a builder gel underneath and then curing it, wiping off the sticky stuff, and then going in with my regular polish on top. So I get the strength, but I can switch the colors as much as I want to. Let it soak and let it sit and soak and then we're off. Yeah, that's smart. I'm being impatient, I don't need to be. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, no, these last few weeks have been a freaking mess. Uh, long story short, I mean, you're here, you're here for chit chats. I don't want to complain too much here on the internet, but uh, my transmission went out in my car. And if you know anything about car stuff, transmissions are one of the more expensive parts of a car if you ever have to get it replaced slash fixed. The annoying thing is I just bought my car two years ago and it's a 2019. So not an old car. Not a car that, you know, and it's a Hyundai. Hyundai is supposed to be pretty good cars. 
I was like, okay, we did all the research ahead of time. This is the type of car that I want. Hyundai's are supposed to be good. They have a really good warranty. It's like 10 years, 100,000 miles. Okay, great. Look into it. Basically, I'm driving home from work one day a couple weeks ago. Uh, I live on a one way, so it's like parallel park. I pull up, I throw the car in reverse. I go to step on the gas to go in reverse and the car doesn't go in reverse. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Why aren't you moving? What's going on? Um, yeah had to have my partner drive me to work the next day. And then we got my car to a Hyundai dealership. I was like, hey, what's happening here? Because something's wrong. We're pretty sure it's the transmission. I'm under warranty though, right? 10 years, 100,000 miles. Transmission's part of the engine, powertrain, blah, blah, blah. It should be cool, right? Uh, it's an automatic, not a manual. I, I like driving stick shift, but this one's automatic. So we're like, yeah, we're under warranty, right? And Hyundai's like, ooh, so sorry that 10 year hundred thousand is actually for the first owner you're the second owner so you don't get that the warranty that you get is five years sixty thousand miles guess what my car is at sixty four thousand miles just just squeaked over that um and because it's a 2019 meaning it was made in 2018 it's over five years old it's like five years ten months or something like that so they were like yeah you're out of your warranty, so you would have to pay out of pocket. And I'm sitting there like, what do you mean? <laughs> so the person we were working with was like, hey, this is super frustrating. I totally get it. You should go and talk to the people that you bought the car from. Because I didn't buy it from that dealership. I bought it from a different one. Go talk to the people you bought it from and be like, hey, you guys told me I had the full manufacturer, 10 year, 100,000. You basically lied to me, like, what's going on? So we do that. And this is all between me having to go to work, my partner having to deal with work, him drive me back and forth to work. I'm doing half shifts at my job because it's a mess, right? Get over to the dealership I bought the car from. And we're like, hey, oh, first, first we called like two, three times. They left messages and then didn't call us back. So we were like, we're just going to go there because <laughs> you can't ignore me if I'm standing in front of your face, right? So we get there and we're like, hey, man. What's the deal? <laughs> What's going on? And we're not being rude. We're not like yelling or anything, but we're clearly like frustrated, you know? Transmissions are not cheap. And the guy's like, ah, oh, yeah, no, we see this happen all the time. Yeah, no, you actually don't get the 10 year 100,000. You get the five year 60,000. Man, that sucks. There's nothing I can do for you. And I'm like, you sure about that? Cause like, I understand that I didn't buy the extended warranty. But at the time in 2022, I was purchasing a 2019, so a three-year-old car. And I thought I had a 10-year warranty. So I'm like, I got like seven years left. Why would I need an extension on seven more years of a warranty? So no, I didn't buy an extended warranty. Come to find out I was three years into a five-year warranty. And if I had realized that at the time, I probably would have bought an extension, you know? The other thing is I bought the car at like 44,000 miles. So for it to be at 64 lets you know that in two years, I've only driven 20,000 miles. I haven't driven the car a whole, whole lot. I'm not over here like going to California and back every other week or anything crazy like that. So like, what's, what do you mean? You know, just, just a very frustrating situation through all of that. The dealership I bought it from was like, yeah, no, best I can do is you get the car here and maybe we can do it for a little bit cheaper but we'll see. Or you trade the car in and get a new one. I got great guys here. They're going to help. They'll be able to get you a best, a better car and blah, 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 whatever, whatever. And in my head, I'm like, sir, I didn't come here for you to sell me a new car. I came here for you to fix my current one that you sold me. Did you sell me a faulty car? This transmission must have been messed up before I bought it because why would it go out in two years? That doesn't make any sense. But no, nothing. No. Nope just maybe get the car here and let us work on it and you give us money or trade it in and buy a new one from us and give us money. And I kind of said, screw you to both of those and we left. <laughs> so yeah, then it was going back to the dealership I was at where we brought the car in the first place, the actual Hyundai dealership and was like, you know what? If we have to do it, we have to do it. It's not under warranty. You're not gonna help us out. They're not gonna help us out. What are we doing? Thankfully, the person that we were working with in the beginning kind of felt bad <laughs> for the situation and was able to talk to 
whoever she needed to talk to and got them to take $1,000 off the top. So in total, it came to about $6,000 for me to get my transmission basically replaced. I don't even know if they fixed it. I think they just straight up replaced it at that point. And then because of the type of car and type of transmission that it is, even though it's an automatic, they had to also replace the clutch. So that is what made it even more expensive because her initial quote, she was like, don't literally quote me on this, but my initial thought is it would be about 3,500, which already I was like, whoa. So then to find out, hey, they have to do the clutch too. It's actually going to be closer to like 5,500 before tax. I was just like, you've got to be kidding me, right? <laughs> I, what do you mean? So lemon laws, if there's anything. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure Pennsylvania has something like that. Yeah, best, uh, better bureau, predatory sales. Yeah, we're going to try to look into it. But at the same time, I don't know if it's even worth it. Not to say if it's even worth it. I don't know if anything would come out of it. You know what I mean? Hopefully if there's somebody we could talk to and just, here's the situation. Do you think we have a case? Is there anything that could be done? Can you reimburse me? Even just for half. You know what I mean? $6,000 is nothing cheap. <laughs> it's not just a simple little, oh, here's 300 bucks. Like $6,000, you know? So, um... Yeah, even if they wanted to like reimburse half, I would be okay with that. But I don't I don't even know where to start, who to talk to at that point, because what do you, what do you do? Who do you who do you go to when both places are like, ooh, sorry, can't help you? I I don't know. <laughs> um So that's that. I left my paper towels. Give me one second. Where did I put them? I was like, oh, I have cotton balls somewhere. Oh, I have paper towels. Somewhere. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm not prepared, basically. That's what this is. Uh, over there. Okay, hold on. Also trying to make sure Pineapple's not behind my chair before I like roll over his little foot by mistake. He's not there. We're okay. Yeah. So, um, that's been the last few weeks, uh, having to get driven back and forth to work when I work almost 40 minutes away, which is super not cool. <laughs> Thankfully, my partner is amazing. His car is still working. His battery did die the one day though. And I was like, oh my gosh, we can't both have our cars out, <laughs> but we got it. We got it together. Um, so dealing with all of that. Also, my boss is extremely accommodating and understanding and was like, you do what you have to do. If it means you do half days at home, half days in the office, go for it, you know? So it's been really helpful. So even though it's been a very annoying and kind of shitty situation, it could have been worse, sadly. Thankfully, I wasn't like on the highway when the thing went out, I didn't crash. You know what I mean? Trying to look at silver lining, trying to look at the positives as much as possible. I had the money in savings, obviously not for that. <laughs> you know what I mean? This was like super, super emergency fund. Like do not touch this money for anything. This is a situation where I had to touch it. So like thankful that I had access to money to be able to handle it because otherwise like $6,000, what are you supposed to do? You know what I mean? How many people out here who would actually be able to do that? Whether it was pulling from savings, pulling from anywhere, you know, any type of access to it. You need your car. You can't faff around waiting for legal crap to save the day. Yeah, exactly. I couldn't have just waited to be like, hey, can you guys pay for this? I'll just wait. Hydrate. I should hydrate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't even think I got to set up channel points and like redemptions and things. I don't know if I'm there yet. I got to look. I feel like you have to be an affiliate to get those. I'm not sure. I have to look into it. I had looked into all this stuff and I was like, yeah, I'm going to stream on Mondays every week. It's going to be great. I'm going to catch up. I'm going to hit affiliate. And then I don't come back for three weeks. <laughs> so, oops. I'm trying, guys. I'm doing my best. But yeah, it's been, it's been frustrating. It's been exhausting. But it's overlining. You know, we're on the other side of it now. I got my car back literally right before, like within the last hour, hour and a half. 
picked up the car, got home. So that's good. The other issue <laughs> that I've been dealing with on top of the car, which is kind of what added to the stress, is uh, most of you guys, if you've been following me for a little bit and hanging out these last few months, know that I recently moved. My partner and I moved into a house together um, back in end of July, beginning of August. Since we got here, we've been dealing with little issues here and there with the house. Not enough outlets, the outlets that we had weren't working. <sighs> I mean, just washer dryer was supposed to be here and then it wasn't here and then it was finally brought here and installed, but then it was installed kind of incorrectly and then we find out the type of washing machine it is, is just kind of a bootleg that doesn't work well and all these issues. Well, the final straw <laughs> is beginning of October, you know, summertime, you're not using your oven that much. Beginning of October, we go to use the oven and my partner's like, hey, hold on, something's up with this oven, we can't use this. I was like, why, what's going on? And um, I guess trigger warning, animal talk, rodent talk, there were droppings on the inside of our oven. Like if you open the stove where the burners are and also inside, like under the broiler, under the, you know, whatever's just inside the oven, which is really freaking frustrating <laughs> when you're just trying to make a frozen pizza for dinner. Like what the hell is this? Yet another issue we were dealing with in this house. And not something that's like an easy, quick little fix, quick little cleanup. Like this is the oven. It's a gas oven. It's a gas stove. Like what the hell is this? Got a consultation from a cleanup crew, pest control. Pest control is like, yeah, it's old. It's not you guys. It's been there for years. Cleanup crew comes in and they're like, yeah, it's old. It's been there for years. And also uh, it would be like $800 to clean this up because of how bad it is. And at that point you could just buy a new oven. So we were like, wonderful. <laughs> we're renting. We're not buying the oven. Gotta talk to the landlord. You hear they message when they hit the number, magic number. Okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> totally freaked out. Yep, I was. Thank whoever you believe in that it wasn't me trying to use the oven because I would have freaked out. I would have, I already deal with anxiety, okay? I think the worst on a good day. <laughs> like I do my best to hold it together, but like my brain tries to sabotage me pretty regularly. If I had been the one to find that, like, I'd have been no good. I'd have been no good at all. So I'm sorry that it was my partner that had to deal with it, but he handled it much better than I would have, to be completely honest. He's the one that set up having the consult the like pest control, the consultation of cleanup and all of that come through, all of it. So he goes to share the information with the landlord and is like, yeah, Here's another issue we're dealing with. Happy first of the month, first, you know, beginning of the month. Um, here's what's going on. And she basically came back and tried to say that it was somehow our fault. Like, oh, are you sure you guys just didn't spill anything? Nope, not spilling droppings. Don't know what you're talking about. We know what they look like. And that's not just some burnt cheese. Okay. <laughs> that's not what's happening. Um, and it just, it turned into a fight. It turned into an argument. And it took back and forth for like a week and some change before she finally like believed what we were saying. And the only reason she even believed it and did anything about it is because we had to get in writing from the cleanup crew. Yes, this is what we found as our expert opinion. It's old. It's basically, it's an old stove also. It's not worth spending $800 to clean it out. And the guys even said it would only be cleaned like 80% of the way. There's no guarantee that it would be 100% like back to new, back to normal. And the person who did the cleanup was like, or who did the quote, wrote in the letter, would I ever use this stove and eat off the stove again? No way. Come on now. <laughs> like, so it took getting that in writing, her coming out and looking at it herself, and us having to go back and forth and almost argue with her of like, I didn't say that there were rats currently in the house. Nobody said that. You're putting words in my mouth. What we're saying is at some point in the past, there were rats in this house and everything else must have been cleaned up except for the oven. They were like living inside the oven or something. I don't know. 
but like this is your house and it wasn't taken care of so like you have to handle this what the hell <laughs> so last week like friday i think thursday friday we finally got a new oven they came out took away the old one put in the new one made sure it was all set up the right way gas lines are secured and put in correctly whatever installed correctly i should say um so now we have a clean oven and stove that we can use again after not being able to use it for 10 days two two two, two weeks because we found it on the first so if they installed it on friday what was that like the 16th 17th something like that a full two weeks of not using the stove in the oven after the beginning of august not using it for two weeks because the bathtub plumbing was messed up caused the kitchen sink no the kitchen ceiling to come down and then we were dealing with a hole in our ceiling and having that patched for two weeks so we couldn't use the oven then either this house is a mess this is a old house that needs some serious work and i just don't know if the person who is in charge of that work is willing to do the actual work that it takes and not just put band-aids on top of stuff which is extremely freaking frustrating so yeah also dealing with that at the same time as my car just not working and being in the shop and how much money is this going to cost and what are we doing and how do we handle it and all that stuff was just super stressful and i was like as much as i want to stream on twitch i don't know if i can do it without crying <laughs> i'm gonna be honest i don't know if i could have done it without sitting here just bawling into the microphone so we're good now we're through it we're past it we have a clean oven that is safe to use I have a working car again. <laughs> I'm out six grand, but we have a working car. We have a working oven. Um, we're looking into other apartments because at this point, why should we continue to stay at a place where it clearly hasn't been taken care of very well over the last however many years? You know, we've been here three months. It wasn't taken care of before we got here. We're paying all this rent kind of for what? You know what I mean? Especially when you have a landlord who's going to like argue with you and try to blame it on you. Come on now, you know that this house hasn't been taken care of well because it's your house. So, that's super frustrating. And not a fun thing to deal with, so. Long story short, <laughs> I say at the end of the long story, um, we're probably moving again. <laughs> not even probably. We're gonna be moving again because we found out that the lease we signed is month to month and not a full year. So it's easy for us to get out of relatively quickly, so. Yay. We actually just came back from looking at one house, or one apartment, two bedroom apartment. Um, very cute. Has actually just been updated. Has been renovated recently. Has been cleaned, was just painted. The landlord was very nice. She lives downstairs, so it's one of those, obviously she's going to take care of the place because she lives here too. You know what I mean? She won't let it go and get neglected and abandoned because it's her house too. So, um, we'll see. We got a couple more to look at. We got to kind of weigh our options and see what's up. See what we could get into and uh go from there so i'm gonna try to keep streaming on mondays <laughs> but again if i'm moving again we'll have to see what i can do but i'll do my best something else that i'm thinking of which i will get into details for once i get painting is um trying to play games if i can't fully come on and like paint my nails on mondays if i do like a second stream or like a different day time whatever um i want to play video games up here again I miss doing that, and I just recently saw that Epic Mickey, which is a game that I played forever ago, loved that game. It's been remastered and it's back, and I'm going to buy it, and I'm going to play it, and I think I might stream it, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> You're so sorry I've had all this in my life. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been freaking frustrating. It's been bleepity bleepity bleep bleep bleep. The words that I have don't need to be set on the internet where it could be traced back to me. So <laughs> come to Seattle, not cheap with the coffee's outstanding. That sounds, that sounds great. Honestly, good that it's month to month. Yeah, I know. I, I didn't even remember that it was month to month. I was looking at the lease and looking up how to get out of a lease. How do we break the lease without it hitting our like renter reputation? And is there a way we can do this? if we prove that we've been dealing with all these issues, like whatever. And then looking into it, I was like, oh wait, it's month to month? Easy, we we can go. <laughs> we can just get out. We don't have to like fight or anything, so. 
yeah that's that's been my life the last few weeks last few months but we're here we're doing the best we can i got a new job i started back in september i've been there a month now so that's exciting um a little far away but not the worst now that i have a car that works like it's supposed to not bad um yeah i think the things will finally start to settle down give it another month you know i'm hoping by like thanksgiving end of november things will be settled the car will be good the house will be good the job will be good and then in december we can just like take a deep breath you know what i mean <laughs> that'd be great so these are my nails this is the builder gel that I have on. I didn't do the best job applying it clearly because it is lifting in the back here. Um, you can kind of see these like air bubbles where it is lifting up. I am going to be honest. I don't really have the patience at this current moment to clean this up and get it redone the right way. So I'm gonna do something you shouldn't do <laughs> and just paint over it. And then maybe this weekend when I have a little bit more time, I can come back, actually use my real acetone, <laughs> take the builder gel off, we start over from scratch. And then maybe my next Mandy Monday, we come back and do it again. But as of right now, we're gonna ignore the lifting and we're just gonna put nail polish on top and cross our fingers. So, um, let's see. I think I want to see okay what I was originally thinking was to swatch both colors on my fingers see how they look and then take this color off and paint this because looking at my nails and knowing yeah they need some help um I don't really know if I want to do that and have to go back in with that nail polish remover so I think we're just gonna swatch this on a piece of paper because <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to paint with it anyway, but we're just going to use the end of my packing slip that does not have my address on it and uh, swatch it there. So let's get a little bit more zoomed in and see what this looks like. Yeah, I hope nobody has to deal with any of the nonsense we've been dealing with. House, car, anything. And if you do, I'm very, very sorry. And I hope you have a good support system because I swear that is the only thing holding me together <laughs> is having people who support me, having, whether it's my boss, whether it's my partner who can drive me back and forth, my family, my friends having my back, giving me suggestions and ideas on what to do, who to talk to. Man, it's a lot, but it's a little bit easier to handle when you actually have like good support. But also, like, nobody wants to deal with all this, especially not at the same time. Like, I know they say when it rains, it pours, but, like, I didn't need it to... I didn't... I believed it. I didn't need to be proven. <laughs> you didn't have to show me. Like, I believed you. Okay. So, just one coat each on a little packing slip. Look at how sparkly already. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, on the left, it's, it looks a bit more pink in this lighting, is the shade Electric Sweetener which is this violet? Is that what that's called? It's like a purple. It's not like lavender, lilac. I'm not sure, but it's very pretty. It's very subtle glitter. Like it's more of like a shimmer. It's not like big chunky glitter, which I like. Feels like a lot of people are going through stuff that isn't catastrophic, but still shocking and or annoying. Yeah, something's probably in retrograde. Yo, I was saying that, <laughs> I was saying that at one point of just like, is Mercury in retrograde? Is Jupiter or one of these planets, is the moon fucking with me? Like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> something's happening. This can't be good. Um, something's, something's happening. Hopefully it's like done now. Planets, please be good to me just for a little bit because it's annoying. But yeah, it's, it's frustrating. And as like you said, like, it's not like it's catastrophic. But it's big enough that it's shocking, it's annoying, it's, I don't want to say borderline traumatic, but like really, really frustrating. And now, you know, you have to switch up your whole schedule. You have to switch up your routine just to be able to handle it. And then it's a matter of balancing multiple issues at the same time. So much. <laughs> you like the Rock Candy Collection, but you're a pink undertone. That's fair. Yeah, I liked the way that the Rock Candy Collection looked when I saw pictures and everything 
but it didn't jump out at me of like, I have to have this right now, you know? So I was like, I'm not gonna spend my money on this. It's cute, but I don't, I'm not a hollow taco collector where I need to have every single polish that's ever come out. I have a lot of her polishes, but I've backed off from getting the like one of everything or even something from every drop. Cause for a while there, I would get like at least the purple shade from every drop for the most part. And this purple shade, I was just like, it's cute. I don't need it, <laughs> you know? So being able to use my points and get it for free, I was like, that'll do, but. And then here, the price is Alexandrite. Shifting from this blue teal to like a purpley violet. It's got some shimmers. It's got some glitters. I, the paper doesn't even show it. It doesn't even do it justice. It's so pretty. And the funny thing is like, I have duo chrome nail polishes. I have multi-chromes. I have her whole multi-chrome collection. That was one of the ones that I bought the full collection, collector's box and all. So I have all five of those. Love a good multi-chrome. But something about the shimmers in this, it's just different. <laughs> you know, if you're a nail person, you know, like it's not the same. It's different a little bit. So here we are. I bought it. Um, I think, I think what would be best is if I actually did put at least a base coat over this and then go into the color. I have a base coat somewhere because I just, just did my nails not that long ago. Let me see. You had the FOMO collection aggression thing for a while, but you've finally been able to show. Yeah, I, ooh. <laughs> I was, I was not chill in the beginning when Hollow Taco first launched. I didn't get everything, but again, I have a lot. And then after a while I was like, okay, at least just the purples. Let me see how they look. You know, once you start doing swatches on people with different skin tones, I was like, oh, I can see what it's gonna look like on someone with my skin tone. How is this shade? Does it look nice? Is it something I would actually wear? It's purple, I'm gonna buy it, you know, but I've, I've finally like calmed down too. <laughs> Um, I have a base coat somewhere. Oh, this was the pink that I mixed up. It's almost like a, like beige peachy nude. I don't need, I couldn't even tell you what it is. This is in a Zoya like clear gloss container. I just added like sheer pink, sheer, or not sheer, like a little bit of pink, a little bit of like a peach with a lot of clear to make it like a sheer shade. That's my nails in a bottle, if that makes sense. Um, so that's what I had on underneath. And then I did the same thing, this one that's like a little bit more pink. Oh wait, no, I'm lying. This is the Naked Perfector. This one I bought like this. This is the one that I mixed up. That's what it is. Yeah, this is the one that I mixed up. This one just looks good. <laughs> but you can see that this is a lot more pink than this. And I know that they make one that's probably this pink. I just didn't feel like buying it. I was like, I got enough polishes. I'm not buying another one. Um, but what I think I will do is see, I do have my smoothing base coat from Hollow Taco, um, but it's kind of thick and I need to add thinner and I don't feel like fighting with that right now. So I'm going to go with this other one from Zoya that I have that works. It's almost butter yellow on that end. Yeah. It's pulling more yellow on the camera and with this lighting that I have, but it's it's more of like a peachy pink. Less pink, more peach, if I'm being honest. It's not bad though. But yeah, I'm just gonna go in with this base coat just so there's like something there. Trying not to spill everything out of this container here. Oh man, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I was I was talking about video games. So yes, I do one of the things that has helped me through all of this nonsense um has been playing video games. I'm not gonna lie. Uh having the support of friends and family, my boss and everybody, and also just like taking time to play video games and like not feeling bad about it. <laughs> um I've been playing the games that I have right now. 
I have a Nintendo Switch and then I have my computer. And my partner, I talked about this a while back, my partner got me into playing Minecraft <laughs> last summer. So we've been playing that. That's been fun. Um, I also, I haven't done a lot more on my computer besides playing Minecraft, but he just got his PS4 um, from his parents' house. I was like, yeah, we got the PS4 again. So I've been playing a bunch of his games on the PS4 and I love a good car racing game. He's got a couple of those. So I've been racing up a storm and having a lot of fun with that, trying to beat my high score, you know, time trials, all that stuff. Um, on my Switch, we actually were playing It Takes Two. We've been playing that for the last couple of months, just off and on. That game is so much fun, you guys. If you haven't played It Takes Two and you like um, kind of like adventure, it's not completely open world. You can run around once you get to certain sections. Certain sections are like open world where you can run around that area and explore and like find little hidden things. Uh, but it's not where you can just like walk around the entire planet, if that makes sense. But it's one of those games that you have to play with another person. It is a two player game. You can't play it by itself. <laughs> um, and you have to work together. You know, it's one of those cooperative games. <laughs> if you test it for a life, you're gonna be jailed. You're so bad. Listen. When you're playing these racing games, you're not following the rules. <laughs> I mean, I was playing Need for Speed last night where you're racing on like streets in the game and trying not to have the cops come after you. <laughs> and I'm on, uh, oh, hi, pineapple. Hey, what's up? My buddy's back. Uh, I'm over here driving on the wrong side of the road in the game to get extra points for my nitrous boost, okay? <laughs> I know, right? I'm playing, um, time whatever trials and doing like 250 miles an hour. <laughs> Show the floof. The floof. The people want to see you. Um, okay. My nails are a little wet, so let me see if we can scoop you. Hi, sweetie. Can you look at the camera? He's mad. Hold on. Hi. We're gonna we're gonna just move the camera entirely. Um, let me. We're gonna switch. My nails are drying right now. We're just gonna do the whole face. Hello, pineapple. The people want to see you. Where are you going? They want to say, see you and say hi. Hi, sweetie. Look at this little man. If I ever get a second camera, I will absolutely set up as like a cat cam for when he comes in. Look at you. He was, he's being, he's being good. It's been, uh, Apparently he's got somebody else in the house with him, but with my partner having to drive me to work and then, you know, all the mess we've been dealing with and going through. He's been hanging out here. And I'm not gonna lie, we were talking about possibly getting another cat, maybe a dog, I don't know, but just so he has a friend. You know, he's been by himself for so long. I feel bad, I want him to have a friend. Same time, with all the mess we were just dealing with, stuff with the house the stuff with my car now it's not a good time for that <laughs> so fingers crossed once we get everything settled a little bit more we can we can we can get him a friend you know first redeem is giving a treat yeah yeah that's definitely gonna be on the list i'm gonna have to keep some up here separately and not keep them all downstairs so it'll just be like okay i can't say the word because he knows what the word means but i will give him snacks he doesn't know what that means He was being a brat the other day, I will say, because I was like, I have to clip your nails. And he doesn't like, you saw, he doesn't like being picked up like that. Um, if I like smush him into the couch and like hold him down, I can grab his paw and like clip his nails. And I got, normally I've gotten good with this over the years. I can clip both paws in the front basically at the same time. He gives me a little bit of a struggle, but I can usually like get through it. Well, this time he fought so much after the first paw, I couldn't get to the second one. And now, I, with everything happening, I just haven't had time. And now I'm like, his second paw, like his nails are getting like really long and starting to like curl under. 
So I'm like, you're gonna be mad at me, but I have to clip your nails soon. We're gonna have to do it. His one paw is fine. His second one is just like, I'm free. I'm doing what I want. <laughs> but yeah, once once we get redemptions, channel redemptions, point redemptions, that'll be one of them for sure. I'll have to figure out what the points will be called. I was actually just watching, um, that since, you know, I like playing Minecraft, I found a Minecraft YouTuber who isn't completely for children, which I love. <laughs> That's one thing that I've learned is because this game, it's not like it's a game for kids, but it's a game that a lot of kids play. And a lot of creators and like Minecraft YouTubers are very... I don't want to say immature, but the way that they edit and they talk and they make these videos, it's definitely aimed at kids, right? And I, I'm 33 years old. I'm a 33 year old lady playing a video game. I don't want to see people screaming and being obnoxious on my screen. I just want ideas on like stuff to build and like, how does redstone work? What does this do? You know what I mean? So I found a person who, uh, I found my partner told me about him. Um, he was playing Minecraft. He's also an adult. <laughs> um, and he was playing it for the first time completely blind, not looking anything up. And Minecraft is a game that's been out for so long and has so many different features and things. Most people, most times, will just look up how to do things, right? This guy, his name's Oliver, was like, yeah, I don't want to look it up. I just want to go into it completely blind and try to finish the game from scratch, right? And that was such a good series. <laughs> I didn't watch it live when it was happening he was streaming it live but then would just put the vods up on youtube so i went back and was watching i don't know 50 hours 70 hours worth of content off and on over the last or over like a few months watched that entire series and watched him finish the game and figure things out here and there and it was really really entertaining um well recently he's been playing other games um and he actually, as the gods intended, exactly. Yeah, he was like, I'm playing it the way that they intended it to be played. I'm not going to look things up, which goes to show it was still kind of tricky for him to get certain things. And there were some things he just never figured out, even using like the hints within the game and like the achievements as clues. Some things he just didn't figure out, but he was able to finish the game. Like there is a plot. It's a lot of open world, do what you want. But if you try to follow the plot of the game, he was able to finish it completely blind, which is very impressive. But yeah, I found him from that series um, and he's been playing other games here and there and he's now streaming it uh, mainly on Twitch. But one thing with Minecraft is they have a hardcore mode. So you're going through the game, you're building, you're playing, you're fighting monsters, whatever. If you die, normally you can just come back, right? No big deal. You just respawn the last place you slept, go pick up your stuff, you're good to go. Well, on hardcore mode, if you die, that's it. <laughs> there is no coming back. There is no getting your stuff. If you're the only person in that world, the whole world is now spectator only and you cannot get back into it unless you like cheat your way, right? So for a while, people were like, you gotta try hardcore, you gotta try hardcore. And he did. And he was streaming that on Twitch. Um, so I've been having fun watching him play that. But I bring that up because I don't even remember how this happened, but in the first series of him playing Minecraft, uh, it, there was an inside joke about potatoes. So his channel points on Twitch are potatoes. <laughs> like you can earn potatoes as you watch for longer and like cash in the potatoes to redeem certain things. Like it's really funny. Oh, the other thing is he's playing it blind. And even though he's streaming, like he was streaming the game, he'll have the chat up in the beginning, talk to chat, hang out, and then basically only have the chat on like his OBS preview on the other screen where he's playing the game. He's not reading the chat. So he's like not taking hints from people. He's not looking at, he's not doing anything. He's literally going in completely blind, which is super interesting, but it's funny. And it's almost built up this like community around him and his play style because his commentary is really funny as he's going through and to see somebody playing this game and doing something wrong or doing something that's going to make you explode or <laughs> whatever and having the chat in the corner talking to each other knowing what's about to happen but he doesn't know it it's just a very very unique experience when it comes to streamers i haven't seen anybody else not pay attention to chat that's the first person i've seen that does that and it's just really interesting and really funny 
but yeah, his channel points are potatoes. <laughs> um, and a lot of the inside jokes and things that he like learned, didn't learn, messed up in his first series have been become emotes on his channel, inside jokes, things here and there. Um, so he tried hardcore a couple of times. He basically died every single time. <laughs> he got really far the most recent time. He got very, very far and then ended up dying and was like, you know, I want to go back to playing this again. Maybe I'll put it on hard, but I won't do hardcore so that if I do die, I can come back and get my stuff. Because that was kind of the thing is like, if you want to build a really cool house or like all these really big whatever things, but then you die and lose the whole world, you lose all that work. And that's kind of frustrating. So he was in the mindset of like, I don't want to spend the time building up these really cool, elaborate things if I am going to lose the whole world. So now he's doing season two of Minecraft where he's streaming himself playing the game. He knows a lot of things, obviously, because he did the whole blind playthrough before. Um, but there's been a few updates since he last played. So there's new things that have been added to the game and new features and new character, not characters, like monsters and things like that. Um, so that part he has no idea about besides new stuff has been added. I don't know what the new stuff is. So I've been watching him do that. Um, and that's been a lot of fun. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's a really unique to me. Maybe it's not unique. I think it's unique. Um, but it's a really unique play style and to be able to do it on Twitch and again, have that community. We talk about this all the time, but like Twitch has so much more of a community than YouTube does. It's just, it's really interesting to watch, you know, especially for a game, like I said, Minecraft, that people think, oh, it's just a kid's game. That's definitely what I thought at first. And it's like, it can be, yeah, you can play it that way for sure. But you can also just play it like you're a person going through the world, trying to collect your resources and build up your supplies and go fight monsters and go, go into the caves and see what you can find. And it's, I don't know, it's really fun. You can streamers out chat on notice. They'll get booted for backseating or spoilers, yeah but not let a spoiled chat talk while they play totally away from it. Yeah, that I think is really interesting too, is like, okay, they all say no backseating, no spoilers. And even during his original playthrough, he would say like, I think in the very, very first like one or two episodes, he was saying no backseating or no spoilers because he still had the chat like on his screen and somebody must have helped explain it to him or he figured out you can put the chat on your second screen with the OBS preview and just play it over here. So you're not even seeing the chat. So he would say, okay guys, I'm not gonna look at the chat anymore. If I say something out loud of like, wait, how does this work? I'm not literally asking you. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves. I'm not looking at the chat at all. I'm just going to sit over here and play the game. If I really do need help for something, I'll say, hey guys, okay, chat, seriously, I'm asking you for real. How does this work or what's going on? And he only really did that if it like, he hit like F3 and ended up with like the settings and like the big debug developer menu and was like, oh crap, how do I get out of this? Okay, no, help me. <laughs> Little things like that. Um, yeah, no, if you go to that chat while he's playing, there are spoilers. There are people saying, this is what's about to happen. This is what this new thing is. He doesn't realize you can do X, Y, Z. This would make his life so much easier. And he just goes about it as best as he can. <laughs> it's, it's a very, very cool play style. At the same time, you have to be pretty disciplined to not look over there every now and then if you know people are giving the answers and like, most likely giving hints and talking about what you could be doing. <laughs> Didn't expect the community to be like this on Twitch. That's the real advance over YouTube, I think. I do too. I mean, when he was first doing those streams, I watched the VODs on YouTube, but I guess he initially was streaming it all on YouTube. And I don't know if after a while he was like dual streaming across both platforms, but from what I've seen, he doesn't stream on YouTube anymore. He's streaming everything here and then just uploads the VODs to YouTube like after the fact. But yeah, no, it, there's so much more of a community over here. And as somebody who's had a YouTube channel for like four or five years now, posting very sporadically, I'm not consistent in the slightest bit. There's a gnat in here. Uh, I just, I never would have pictured that. I never would have known. You know, I think of Twitch as like, yeah, people playing video games. The end. <laughs> Which there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I love games too. I'm not knocking it. But the fact that there's so many other niches and there's so many other ways to be creative and ways to make videos and things to talk about with these videos. I'm sitting here painting my nails. Like what? <laughs> and have a community of people who like, yeah, I haven't been here streaming in like three weeks. 
and I come back, notification goes out, hey, I'm streaming again, I'm doing my nails, what's up? Pop it in the Discord. And there's a couple people here watching me and hanging out. And I love it so much. And it's just, it's such a good feeling, you know? I really like this. I know I've said this before, but I just, I, I have a good time here. Affiliate would be great. Partners seems like a lot, but at least affiliate would be cool. But even if I never hit that, I just truly as a hobby, I just really enjoy doing this. And I just have a lot of fun with it. And then I get to learn about new nail stuff. Like I just looked at some stamps, like um, stamping plates that I'm like, you guys were talking about them in the last stream or maybe two streams ago. Uh, and I was like, oh, I'm definitely buying some of these. <laughs> I would have never known about these places. You'd be cheating by looking. Yeah, I don't know how he has the self-control. Because if I really got stuck on something, I would probably just be like, oh, what if I try this? <laughs> and there's been a couple of times that I'm like, he figured something out or he tried something coincidentally and it just happened to be exactly what people were talking about like a couple minutes before and i'm like did you cheat did you look at the chat and you're acting like you didn't there's no way there's no way you didn't look this up but i i will take him on his word if he's lying he got me you know <laughs> you had no idea what it was you watched Colette on Colette's VODs on YouTube and she would mention how you could suffer with Prime and so you wanted it over. Ooh, very nice. Yeah, I'm trying to be better about uploading VODs over to YouTube. I actually just put up a stream from the 18th on my channel is when I did those orange and brown like plaid nails. I put that VOD up um, because I also was trying to take clips. I'm hungry. Sorry if you can hear my stomach growling. <laughs> Um, I was taking the videos and like clipping it down to try to make like one minute short videos of not like a full tutorial, but kind of tutorial, of, like what I'm doing, how I did this manicure. Um, but on YouTube, when you have like the YouTube short, you can link it to a full length video, which reminded me I need to put the VOD up first and then I can link this together and it SEO, whatever. Um, so I'm trying to be better about that. But that is one thing that I would like to do when it comes to this is like, if I'm trying to do this as a hobby, but still use it for content in some way as the manicured scientist, let me figure out how to make one piece of content and then cut it up into a bunch of different ways and put it in different places. So whether it's a VOD on YouTube, short form, shorts, reels, TikToks, whatever, you know, do what works. <laughs> so you're shocked she was playing games, not just doing nails. Yeah. That's the other thing that gets me is like, okay, yeah, you have these communities and it's people who are playing games or it's people who are doing whatever, but then it's people who do both. That I didn't expect either. I was like, oh, well, if I come over here to paint my nails, I can only paint nails. I'll never be able to do anything else, which is not true. <laughs> and I love that it's not true. I'm like, oh no, we're playing games. We are going to play games. Over the summer, when I first, first started this, I was playing Coffee Caravan, like a time management restaurant type game, little coffee shop game. That's so much fun. They had a summer, drop that was supposed to be an ice cream shop and i haven't played it in a couple of months and i don't know if that ever happened maybe that'll be something else that we come back and try to play um we'll see but i was playing that for a little bit um i think the only other thing we did was like the words with friends on stream that we did all together but there's a couple of games that i have on steam that i'm like i want to play this <laughs> this would be such a good thing to stream um, there's a game called The Binding of Isaac, which is just like a roguelike game. You run around, dungeon crawler, fight the monsters, get to the end, beat the big boss, do it all again with a different character. Do it all again, because every time you jump back into the world, it's a different um, set of floors and a different like layout, you know? That's something I've seen streamed up here a lot, and that's something you can get like hundreds and hundreds of videos out of, because every time you play, it's something different, you know? More and more people are using the restream thing so they get YouTube and Twitch together. Yeah, that's what I was doing too. And then I, I might get back into it, getting warm. Um, I don't know, for a little while there, it was almost like, you're gonna end up with, I don't wanna say weirdos, that's mean, but you're gonna end up with random people who maybe are not interested in that same niche or interested in that topic in your videos, right? No matter where you are. 
and I was noticing it more on YouTube than I was on Twitch. Twitch seemed to function, uh, focus and like filter it a little bit better algorithmically, I guess, than YouTube was doing. So for a while I was like, I'm just going to stop and I'll just put the VODs on YouTube. Um, I might get back into doing both. I'm not sure. Also, it's less of a pull on my computer to only send it to one. So that's nice. I'm also, even today, like I'm still learning OBS and playing with it. They have a feature where you can stream and record at the same time. And I'm trying that for the first time today because I know that Twitch only lets your video stay up for a week if you're not like partner or whatever. And I don't want to miss downloading the video that I did to be able to upload it to YouTube because I waited too long. I almost missed one of them. I caught it with like one day left. But I was like, if I just record it locally myself, like, then I don't have to worry about it. You spend hours ping pong watching game. You're not even sure what's happening or cringing at Bunny's horror games. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, she's good about playing games too. She always ends up playing, not always, but a lot of times that I get her notifications, I'm at work and I'm like, ah, I can't always watch stuff when I'm at work. Or if I don't know the game, it's hard for me to like, just listen in the background while I'm doing something else. So I haven't been able to watch a lot of her streams lately. I need to get back into them though. If if there is something at work when it's like an easier day, like today actually worked out because uh, Oliver was streaming himself playing Minecraft when I was at work and like the timing of it and like things were pretty chill. I had a couple of tests to run in the lab and I was like, I can just put this on in the background. And because I know the game, I didn't have to look at the screen as often. I could just hear what he was talking about and hear the sound effects and I knew what was going on. It's harder to do that when you don't know the game, but I think if I have another one of those easy days and she's playing something that I don't know, I'll be able to jump in and like watch it a little bit more. You know what I mean? We'll be with you no matter what you're doing. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's just, it's so fun, you know? And that's one thing that like, again, I know we've talked about this before, <laughs> but like one thing that like annoyed me so much with Instagram was how much people were saying like, you have to niche down. You can only do this one thing. And people were having like, two and three Instagram accounts because each one was based around a different topic. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. It's hard enough running one account. Now I have to run multiple because I want to talk about different things. And after a while, people are like, I'm the niche. If you're interested in me as a person and things that I like, I'm going to talk about all of these things on my page. Majority might be nails or skincare or whatever their main thing is. But every now and then you might get like a life update or you might get this random travel thing because I went on a trip or you might get a game that I'm playing, you know? I am the common denominator <laughs> in all of it. And it's, I think the algorithm over on Instagram is kind of just like, who even knows what's going on at this point? Meta, I don't, I'm not happy with. But knowing that I can still do that same idea here on Twitch is, is very cool that polish I know right oh my gosh I gotta clean up still cuticles are a mess but like look at this I can't even like how do you even show this that's something else that I want to get better at again is taking pictures of my nails I used to do swatches for brands not a lot I've done a couple um I was on Zoya's PR list for a couple years and I would take pictures of their polishes get the whole collection before it came out take the pictures I wasn't doing it like for pay, I just was doing it like as a blogger and to boost my blog and everything. And also to kind of show like, here's what these polishes look like on somebody with darker skin, because you don't always see that with big nail polish brands. The smaller indie brands, I feel like do a good job of it, but bigger brands kind of don't. So I was like, I can fill in that gap. But it's a lot of work swatching a bunch of nail polishes and getting the angles right in your lighting. And doing all of that while I had a full-time job, that was stressful as all hell. Like working 10 hour shifts, it was just, it got to be too much. So as much as I enjoyed doing it, I just really couldn't keep up. And then I started doing it for smaller brands like Alchemy Lacquers over in Philly. I did a couple of her collections about a year and a half ago. And then again, I, like I felt so bad. I was like, I can't keep up with this. Um, I did Hala Taco collections that I purchased for myself. And I started reaching out to other brands to like try to build it up more, but then was like, I literally can't keep up, so I need to like pull back and just stop for a while. But I would love to get back into it because look at this. <laughs> Even just to be able to show off like new colors that I got or new designs of me stamping and things like that. Refiguring out lighting, background shots, how do I make this look good? How do you even show what I'm seeing in person? 
Do I need like multiple lights? Probably. How do we do this? I don't know. But yeah, I think that'd be kind of fun to get back into. Now that I have a job that is not as stressful, uh, I'm not doing 10 hour shifts. I don't work nights. I don't work weekends. It's actually really nice. <laughs> I feel like I could get back into it again. Man, it's so pretty. I, it's, it's, it's literally not even showing the purple that I see in real life. You can kind of see it here, but it's so much more vibrant of a purple. It's pulling like blue and then it's pulling kind of teal. But there's also like a big punch of purple that hits. That's just so good. Oh, got this polish is really nice. The other thing, I have a micro, nope, macro lens that I bought when I was doing all these nail pictures. I saw it recently when I was packing stuff up, but where is it? I got to find it again. Because <laughs> imagine if I could like do this and then we pop on the macro lens and like really zoom in and show you these colors, whether it's on live or like pictures after the fact. Oh, so good. I'm hungry. I know. I'm sorry. Um, is this overkill? Or do I throw scattered hollow taco on top? Because this is definitely glittery. Flashlight time is good too. Ooh, that's right. Let's see. So I have like a lamp right here. If I turn on the actual like flash. There's the teal, like direct overhead flash. You can almost see the purple like on the sides, which is kind of cool. What if I turn the brightness down? Ugh, it's so good. Even without my cuticles looking halfway decent, the polish just speaks for itself. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I almost want to come back and do a comparison of like all the multi-chromes that I have. Because I'm telling you, I have like three, four, five colors that shift like this. But they're all amazing and I'm not getting rid of any of them. I'm sorry. Yeah, the big flakes that are in here make this one different. The big flakes, the little shimmers. It's just good. It's just so good. Ugh. Uh, yeah, I think just to play while we're playing, I might pop a little bit of, um, whoa, exposure, come back, please. Thank you. Uh, scatter hollow taco. Let's make this even more sparkly. Just on one. Actually, let's swatch it first <laughs> before I mess up my nails. So this is where we're at right now. Right. Very cute. Very cute. What if, does this do anything? Scattered, so there's not a lot of it there. <laughs> That's the polished addicts mantra, similar, not the same. Exactly, you get me, you get it. Ooh, it does add a little something. Uh, I think. I think we're gonna do it. It just, it adds a little, a little extra sparkle. That holographic sparkle. I keep getting my hand to the camera. Come on, act like you know what you're doing. Do it. <laughs> okay, okay. It's happening, we're doing it. Man, I love the wide width brushes that she has on some of these polishes. <sighs> yeah, that's what it needed. That's a lie. It doesn't need anything. It's beautiful on its own. But it's so good with a little bit of extra sparkle on top. Just that little bit of extra holographic sparkle. Makes everything better. This one, especially when you put the flash on. Ooh, mm. that's gonna be good. That's gonna be a good time. I 
something else that I like seeing, which is a little different, is doing a multi-chrome like this, but then putting a matte top coat. Now the holographic shimmer is not going to be the best with matte top coats, but the multi-chrome in matte. It's almost like a velvety finish. I don't even know how to explain it, but it's, I love the way that it looks. I don't know how this would work because it's got these shimmers like mixed in. But if you haven't tried matte multi-chromes, I recommend it. David C. Simply Clap, I did see it. I, I almost bought it because I do like tea and she has like a breakfast maple flavored tea, which sounds delicious. And I, I stopped myself. <laughs> I was like, I was literally like in the car. My, my partner was driving me from work to go pick up my car from the dealership. And I'm like, I have to put out so much money to get my car. It's just tea. It's not that expensive. She has a coupon code. I might come back and do it anyway. I don't know yet, but I'm like, I need to try to be a little bit good and save money, but God, it sounds so good. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's like a maple breakfast oat vanilla something tea. Like, it sounds so good. Also, if you look at the pictures, her nails are painted teal, which I don't know if that's a teal that's already out and I just forgot. Like, show me the teal. Or is it a new color that she's coming out with for this collab? Because it looks like the exact shade of teal that's the David's Tea, like, branding. You know what I mean? I'm curious. I don't know how much actual tea is in there. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Am I paying money to get like two tea bags or is it like a whole thing? Like, I don't know. Also, aren't they based in Canada? Like what's that shipping gonna be like coming to the US? They probably have US warehouses actually. But either way, I was like, I'm gonna be good. I'm not gonna do it. But like ask me in a week and I may have changed my mind. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> if we still had a David's Tea locally, and they were offering it in store, I would also just go pick that up too. But I don't know of any David's Tea locations anywhere near me. I have to look it up. Um, and since it's limited edition, like it might not even be something that's available in person. Gotta look. Okay, so let me see. If I turn off this light, that doesn't do anything. Okay, I'm gonna put that back on. We're gonna do this. God, even in the dark, ah, even in the dark, it's really pretty. They pulled out of the US during COVID. Ooh, good to know. Yeah, the mall I used to work in back in grad school, I remember had a, was it David's? No, it was Tivana. There was a Tivana, which I think is Starbucks. It wasn't David's tea. Oh, too dark, hold on. Oh my gosh, look. Look. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Especially when it has like that darker flare and then you just see the little, oh, it's so pretty. You're still working through your box of oats overnight. Your husband didn't like it. See, that was another collab that I almost bought and I changed my mind on. I've had overnight oats before that I've done myself. And they kind of just taste okay. <laughs> like maybe it's me doing it wrong, but I'm not a huge fan of like cold oatmeal in the morning. I know you could probably just reheat it afterwards after you let it sit in the fridge, but it was like cold and mushy. And I was like, ah, I could add something for crunch on top, get a granola or something. But I was just like, I'm good. You know, I I'm okay. So I didn't even buy that collab. The tea one now I'm like, I do drink tea. It's probably gonna be good, but like, again, I I'm not such a huge Simply fan that I have to buy every single thing that Christine does, you know? I know some people out there who absolutely are and are like full collectors. Props to you, shout out to you. <laughs> good luck to your wallet. <laughs> but uh, no, I've, I've pulled back. I like a lot of her stuff. I, you know, support her brands, obviously, but Overnight oats in the crock pot. Now that's an idea. Cause then they're gonna be warm. Ooh. See? And as it gets colder outside, like 
still remember the whole house smells so yummy. See, you might have done something there. You might have just changed my mind entirely. <laughs> so, do you have the crock pot just running overnight? Like you put everything. I'm so hungry. I'm so sorry. Uh, you just put everything in overnight and just let it run. And then in the morning, you have oats, right? Ugh, I need to look into this. <laughs> I'm gonna need to do this. Um, I recently, as I turned the splash off and get ready to turn the lights back on, uh, clean up my nails. Where's my brush? Crock-Pot talk. That's where we're at now. You're on low, slow speed. You did a pumpkin version. Ooh, I could totally do that. I could absolutely do that. Um, my most recent crock pot um, win was doing apple cider. I saw a way, I was at Aldi, in groceries, cool, I wanted cider, they didn't have cider, they had apple juice. So in the aisle, I was looking up, can you turn apple juice into apple cider? <laughs> and it says yes. So I bought a thing of juice and I ended up putting the whole like 32, 64 ounce thing of juice in the crock pot and you add extra spices to it. You can also add like slices of orange or like extra apple or extra orange for like a little bit of citrus flavor. I didn't have oranges, so I just used like half a lemon. Um, and then I did cinnamon, nutmeg, like cinnamon sticks, and then extra ground cinnamon afterwards. Nutmeg, they said allspice, I don't have allspice, but I have star anise, like the little stars that have like a black licorice flavor. I love black licorice and it just adds a little like depth to it without it being like super overly sweet. And then a little bit of brown sugar. And I just let that thing go. It was supposed to be for like an hour and a half, two hours. I dozed up on the couch and woke up and it was four hours total. But oh my God, <laughs> it came out so good. We drank through that whole thing in like two days. Like I let it go, like I said, let it go, dozed off, came back. <laughs> Okay, tastes good. It needed something. Put more cinnamon. And then I was like, I need to go to bed. I'm not just gonna leave this like in the kitchen, this like very sweet substance in the kitchen. I don't, I'm not trying to deal with bugs. We already got like flies in the house and like gnats and things. So I bottled it back in the apple juice container and put it in the fridge. So it basically like cold brewed in the fridge overnight. Then the next day I took it and put it back in the crock pot to reheat and re cook or whatever. And it tasted better. I think sitting it in the fridge overnight to let it all like steep together and then reheating afterwards did something amazing because it was it was good before. It was really, really good afterwards. Amazing. It was so good. Um, and now that's something I'm going to be doing all the time <laughs> is I love cider. And yeah, I could just buy cider. But what if I make my own, you know, what if? And if I get lazy, then yeah, I'll just buy a thing of cider when I find it. If I can't find it, they always have apple juice. Where's my cleanup brush? Did I bring it downstairs? I might have. I don't think I did. My partner likes wearing clear nail polish on his nails, so I did it for him. But I don't think... No, it's right here. Again, starting to pack things up for moving and I'm like, everything is everywhere and I don't know where anything is. Um, okay, what am I doing? Clean up. <laughs> yeah, no, that cider, oh my God. I will be doing that again. It's such a good fall drink. Like, I like hot chocolate. I like a good chocolate. I like tea, I like coffee. But cider and not even like an alcoholic cider this was just this was just cider anybody could have this now you could add like rum or something to it if you wanted to in the crock pot or like have it on the side and you just like add it to your cup separately definitely an option but just the non-alcoholic one was also really really good i was really happy with it we'll be doing that again the other thing i'm going to be doing that i actually just took out the freezer is uh pot roast Got myself a pot roast. We also have some potatoes. So now what I have to do is get myself carrots and then cut up the potatoes, get all that in the, in the crock pot together and let that go overnight slash while I'm at work one day. 
So we can come home and have like a good hearty dinner. Maybe some biscuits in the oven. Now that we have a clean oven we can use. Stop, I'm so hungry. <laughs> I just, I love crockpot meals. I get so lazy and so tired sometimes that I'm like, man, I understand why our parents were gone at work, were running errands, and asked us to take something out of the freezer, and then we'd be really mad if we forgot. I freaking get it now. <laughs> like, I'm so tired. I don't want to do all this adult whatever work and then come home and also have to cook food. Like, I'm eating a bowl of cereal and going to bed. Are you kidding? And I might just eat dry cereal. I might not even put any milk in it. <laughs> I literally had dry cereal for dinner last night because I was like, I can't be bothered. I'm going to bed. <laughs> But yeah, crockpot stuff just makes things so much easier. It makes the house smell good. Ah, oh, man. You can also do it. It's very like fall, winter, but like it doesn't heat up the house. So you could definitely do it when the weather's warmer instead of having the oven on or the stove on. Soups? Forget it. Oh my God. Soups in the crockpot? Stop it. Yep, autumn foods are the best for working with your bean cookbook stew and soup sections, exactly. Yeah, I had a, uh, like years ago, I tried a lentil soup, which is pretty good. Um, I've done a chicken tortilla soup, which was really good. I like took the um, tortillas, ripped them in half and put them in the toaster because I didn't have an air fryer. Now I have an air fryer, but like toast it up and just dip it in the soup. Um, and then baked potato soup was the other one that I did. Maybe that's what I'll do with the potatoes. Like a baked potato soup is so good. Let's get heavy cream. I have to go back to the grocery store. Man, you guys give me such good ideas. Yeah, what flavor overnight oats? Because now I'm curious. I'm like, if overnight oats in the oven, what? <laughs> that defeats the purpose. Overnight oats in the crock pot are a thing. I can like make my own. Or I don't know if Christine's would work. Not Christine specifically, but like that brand. Could you do that? Or are they like individually packaged of like, here's one cup's worth, one serving's worth. I actually don't know how that works. Finish off creamy tomato white bean stew with veggies and ground beef. Oh my god, that sounds so good. Ugh. One of my coworkers just brought in, she has like a really nice um, garden. So she'll bring in different like foods and stuff every now and then. And at her neighbor had a bunch of tomatoes. <laughs> my coworker was like, we can't eat this many tomatoes at one time. So she's been bringing those into work. And then she also has lemongrass in her garden. So now I have tomato and lemongrass. Probably won't do anything with it together, but I don't know what to do with lemongrass. I didn't even know what it was. I thought it was a green onion. <laughs> and then somebody else came over and was like, no, I think it's lemongrass. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I heard that tea is good. Like if you steep it as a tea, that could be really good. Um, I don't know. I got to look it up though. If you know of anything to do with lemongrass, let me know. Variety pack. I'm not even in the camera. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Variety pack of 24 last month doubles of what you thought the husband would like. He didn't like the aftertaste. Yeah, the monk fruit or the protein powder. That's fair. That's fair. I actually just found a protein powder. Um, my partner wanted a new one. And it's like strawberries and cream flavored. He said it's really, really good. It tastes like, uh, I haven't tried it myself, but he said it tastes like almost like a funfetti cake. Like not pure cake batter, but like a strawberry cake and doesn't really have an aftertaste, I'll have to find the name. But I was like, oh, glad you like it, okay. Tire Asian influence can use lemongrass, just don't eat it. Don't eat it, like cook with it, but then like take it out after. Interesting, I do have a stir fry. It's like one of those stir fry kits that you get from like Aldi, it's like the noodles and everything and you like add whatever vegetables to it. So would you add it in like a spice at the end or? Now I have to look it up. Is it like the root on its own you're not supposed to eat like before it's cooked? It's about as edible as a twig. Oh God. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> not like I was going to pick it up and just bite it, but like, good to know. Good to know.
So it's just there for the flavor and then you take it out after. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Again, I thought it was green onion when I first saw it. It's like this really long green stalk. Proven wrong. Glad I was proven wrong. Whack the crap out of it, let it flavor stew, and then take it out with a bay leaf. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, because I've seen that you're supposed to take bay leaves out because they're just like good for flavor, but like don't. <laughs> don't eat this. You don't want this. Good to know. Treat it like a bay leaf. Okay, cool. I can do that. Look at my nails. I'm so... Ugh. Uh, oh, I just... Listen. That scattered hollow taco. A little bit of extra sparkle on top. Never go wrong. Never go wrong with a little extra sparkle. The cuticles are still dry and need help, but my nails look good. Let's finish up with a little bit of a top coat and then uh, wind down this stream. Oh no, did I just smudge? I think I'm okay. I am getting hungry. I've been hungry. You've probably heard me growling. Ooh, slow cooker, easy Thai coconut soup with lemongrass. Ooh, that sounds really good. Thank you. Do it in the slow cooker. Uh, lime, cilantro, lemongrass, Thai curry paste, make with chicken or without. Make it as a meal, scooping half a cup of rice into each serving bowl. See, I'm not big on coconut but I would try this or at least something similar. Maybe like if I tweak a couple of things here and there. That sounds really good. Thank you. I'm saving this link. <laughs> just leave, yeah, just leave that part out. Use like a heavy cream or something instead of like coconut milk. I know like coconut flavored things I don't really like shredded actual coconut. I don't really like, I don't know what it is. Samoas, like Girl Scout cookies that are that have the coconut, didn't like those. But I used to have a cat that we adopted at the same time we got pineapple uh, and I named her coconut. <laughs> I just thought pineapple and coconut together, like my little pina colada would be really cute. But I'm like, I'm doing all this. I don't like coconuts. I love pineapple foods. That was okay. She was great. My sweet little, little baby kitten. She was so cute. That's what you do. You can't do anything with curry, so you always work around it. Yeah, I'm going to have to work around that a little bit. Because I'm also not big on mushrooms. But I think what I might do, because my partner likes mushrooms, is one, figure out how to cook them. <laughs> and two, maybe I'll let him cook that. Hey, babe, here's a recipe. You want to try this? <laughs> um, or like make it with mushrooms and pick it out for myself. He likes them. I don't know. Maybe I just don't have the right palate for it. But a couple of times that I've tried mushroom stuff, I was like, no, thank you. Not for me. I'm gonna pass, thanks. All right, here are the nails. Here is Hollow Tacos. What is this called? The price is Alexandre. <laughs> like completely forgot. Let's see, let me zoom out a little bit, get this final, uh, final look. My dry cuticles. We'll get better pictures later. Look at this. You can kind of see the purple there. Oh, also with the scattered hollow taco. This on its own is good. And then you add more glitter. Look, did you see? Right when it was like kind of blurry and unfocused. I get really close, you can see. <gasps> Look at the sparkles when it's not focused. 
yes oh it's so good i love nail polish you guys do too i'm talking preach to the choir here but like i don't understand how people don't like nail polish what do you mean what do you mean you get the same color every time you go to the salon you just always get like a regular baby pink or you just get like burgundy have you seen this hello do you know the sparkles exist Ugh. You never think of monk fruit having an aftertaste, but your niece swears it does. I don't know if I've ever had anything with monk fruit in it. I might have and didn't realize it. Sparkly, so sparkly. Ugh. It looks so good. I'm so happy I bought this. Maybe the next uh, manicure, I'll, I'll go back and stamp something again. I don't know what I'm going to stamp. Oh my god, wait, it's almost Halloween. I want to stamp a Halloween thing. I was going to buy, I waited too long with all the card and house stuff, and it's not going to come in in time, but I was going to get those uh, McDonald's bucket, like Halloween bucket stampers, like stamping plate. What am I even saying? Um, I still might end up buying it, so I have it, but I don't have it now. And I was going to do that, but I'm pretty sure, I know I have orange nail polish, but I think I do have a Halloween-ish plate that has like the jack-o'-lantern faces. So maybe we'll stamp that. Yeah, 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 right here. You can kind of see the little faces on the side there. Maybe we'll do some uh, jack-o'-lantern, little Halloween look. Or like the little ghosties would be cute. The bats could be cute too. Oh my gosh, if I did the bats in, what was the color from Sophia's collection that was, was it called it's freaking bats or something? It was like a really dark blue, almost black with like blue sparkles. That could be cute as like bats on top of something else. I don't know, we're gonna have to play with it. That'll be next week. I'll come back with my nails actually prepped and ready to go. I don't know if I'll prep on stream because it always takes so freaking long. <laughs> so I will try to make sure that I have them like polish is down. Any base coat is on and ready to go. I might just do like a the base gel instead of the builder gel. Because the last few weeks of me doing this with just the base like mega stick gel, I haven't had any issues with lifting. This one I do the builder gel and it's been... What's today? Wednesday? I did this like last Monday. So it has been like 10 days. If I did it Monday, maybe it was Wednesday. Either way, it's been about a week, maybe a little bit more. And the builder gel you saw was lifting. So I think I'm just not good with builder gel, sadly. But the base gel alone did give my nails enough strength and made the nail polish last a really long time. Maybe I'll just stick with that. But either way, yeah, we'll have that done. We'll come back. We'll stamp. We'll play. We'll get a little spooky Halloween manicure going. And we'll have some fun. But yeah, these are the nails. I'm very happy with this. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> I just keep looking at my hand. I just keep looking at my nails. I need cuticle oil really, really badly, but I don't have any over here because everything's packed and like moved somewhere else. I don't even know where it is. We'll figure it out. I also still have to do my right hand, so we'll get there. But anyway. I think that's going to just about do it. Thank you again for hanging out. This has been a lot of fun. I love this little community we have here. Nail nail people over on Twitch. You've been doing Orange Tober all month. Oh my God, that's right. I'm going to have to see some of the other ones you've done. They're on your Instagram, right? I want to go back and look. For the Halloween party Friday at the dog park, you're doing something not orange. Ooh, is it like a dog theme? Do you have like dog colors or like dog, <laughs> like a dog stamp? It's like the ears or something. That could be really cute. Cannot wait to see. Thank you for stream. Thank you for hanging out. Again, this has been so much fun. Sorry I was gone for three weeks. My life was on fire. The flames are being put out though, so we should be good. <laughs> we should be okay going forward. If I can't do exactly twice a week playing games and all that, we'll see. Maybe I will. Maybe I'm going to try. We're going to hang out. We're going to see what we can do. We're going to do our best. But yeah, I'm going to go eat and 
possibly work on my right hand, I might just leave it. I don't know. We'll see. But thank you again for hanging out. This has been a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I will talk to you guys later. Hope you have a good rest of your Wednesday night. Enjoy some good food. Get that soup. Get that stew. Get that crock pot going. Make yourself some cider. <laughs> yeah, hope you have a good rest of your night. Um, oh, Colette is streaming stamping if you want to ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go see what she's stamping. Um, I'm going to stop recording this and let's raid. Let me remember how to do this. <laughs> um, raid. Here we go. Oh, she's doing Halloween stamping. Yeah, yeah. Let's go see what Colette's doing. All right, we're going to raid her in just a couple of minutes here. So if you want to come along, come along for the ride. Let's see what she's up to. Thank you again for stream. This has been a lot of fun. Have a good night. Bye, everyone.